forsaken by Him. May all divine qualities adorn our souls and bring peace to our minds. <coughs> Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Good morning. Probably this is the end of our session, no? <laughs> we will be having two months gap. Yeah, we have summer recess. Yes. Summer recess, yes. Enjoy your summer recess afterwards. <laughs> and uh, really, we are happy to be with you today. And our topic is a serious topic. What is the topic? How long? <laughs> we need to practice. <laughs> have we got a very simple response? <laughs> yes. IBS. That would have been good. <laughs> but this reply is very hedgy. No one gives any guarantee how long to practice. So it is a question we have to understand. Then really, we have to go on for whole life and in expectation. And ultimately, whether it will happen or not, who knows. So what is the assessment? What is the instruction of the sages and saints? What they talk about this? And really, what we find in the lives of the mystics. So this is our point to uh, consideration, point of consideration today. Sri Ramakrishna have clearly described what one single word, the goal of life is God realization. Fixed. Atma to evo tabyo. Tabyo means it is to be done. What is to be done in human life is Atma to eva, Atma, eva, only that Atma is the object of our question. We should have to ask for knowing our real self. Upanishad declares. Huh? And it's, it's always saying, that there is an ultimate reality. We must have to reach. What is the need of reaching that ultimate truth? That also is the reason. Why I shall spend my energy in this main search for this God realization, which is doubtful. We do not know whether it will be achievable in, for me. Some few people say that it is Ramakrishna said, but he may be a crazy guy. Well, that is true. Will it be true for me? What is the guarantee? So this question remains that what the goal will be because we forget about God. What is the goal of life? In a simplistic language, we we'll have to say what we want in life, we want joy. How can I get joy, uninterrupted joy? In this response, there is no problem. Atheist, theist, monist, dualist, Vedantist, non-Vedantist, sinner, seeker of truth, non-seeker of truth, everyone will agree on this one point, that we are in life's journey, 
go through suffering and pain. We want, all of us want, a joy, a peace which will be abiding. No one can contradict on this point. Now forget that, take it, that, uh, that object as God. We are saying God, to simplify the uh, issue. But the question is that eternal peace, eternal joy, and eternal blessings. How can I reach that? If you say, oh, I don't need, who can say I don't need it? Only a Brahmagyani who has reached that stage, he can say I don't need anymore, I have it. <laughs> or a fool, a crazy man whose brain does not function, he can say I don't need joy. I don't find any person who can say I don't need joy. I don't need peace. So the philosophy has been established that twin, twin, uh, two ideas, two ideas are the main objective of life is Vedanta teaches that authentical dukkha nivritti, authentic means extreme, nivritti is annihilation. Authentic nivritti of dukkha. Dukkha means the suffering. Not momentary. I have some aches and pains, you give some Tylenol, it goes away, but again it comes tomorrow morning. So it is no solution of the problem. I have certain problem, you give some medicine, yes, I am cured today, but another point, one disease is gone, another disease takes opposition. So it is no solution. So authentic, is there anything which can remove the total annihilation of all my sufferings? And in positive sense, Paramananda Prapticcha. Second goal of life is all the same thing in a positive direction. Paramananda Prapti. We want to achieve that Paramo Ananda. That Ananda, which is Param, superlative. Why superlative? Because I know this Ananda, which comes from sense experience. I know how long it stays with us with a good, tasty food. You go to a very good restaurant and have a good meal, and you can talk and eat and enjoy for hours together. But when it is done, then it becomes a memory. And next day is a bitter day. You had a wonderful meal, and next day is ordinary savory cereal meal. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not solving our problem. <laughs> Paramananda is not at him. Rather, today's ananda becomes a cause of suffering of tomorrow. <laughs> really, anything <coughs> we find extremely happy with, and the same thing, and some other day, becomes a cause of my pain or frustration. So the goal has been fixed in this two way, parama ananda prapti. We want to achieve Ananda of the Supreme. That means it is not going to go away from me. It will be a perpetual friend of me. It will stay all the moment. Sri Ramakrishna, look at that. Anything, seeing anything in the universe, he gets inspired and boom, his mind shoots up and immediately he's in Samadhi. And then you see the whole body is eh, pulsating in joy. So that is called Paramo Ananda Prakti and Atuntika Dukhani Vritti, the total annihilation of all suffering. It may appear when he is in the body consciousness, little sense of bodily pains and X as if he is expressing, but he is not there. Mind is not there. So this goal can be fixed for anyone, whether atheist or theist, as I was talking. Whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, no one needs to know any philosophy. 
This can be said that that is the objective of life. And now, to, can he achieve? So, people have tried this, to achieve this in various ways. With the development of technology, with the development of our modern science, life has become much easier. In early days, people used to suffer so much in hot climate, in cold climate, uh, facing the challenges of other sufferings, disease. Now we are all living 80, 70, nothing, 70, 70, 70, young man. Right? And then 90, 90, yes, you can think you, you have become a little old. <laughs> so it is all the technology and medicine and all these are creating this type of little help. But it is also adding to agonies, <laughs> adding to some pain and frustration also. We have to live so long, but this is, the body is not cooperating that much, but continue for so many days. Previously, people had not that medicine, and without medicine, within few days, care. But now, doctors will keep you going on and on and on. Even I am in coma, they may keep me one month, two months, three months, no? So, so this is a, a really a this technology tried to give us the momentary or physical level certain such type of dukkha nirvitti suffering is to be removed, reduced. Now pain medication, now pain management has become such a wonderful thing nowadays. People don't suffer. We cannot imagine how people used to suffer in early days. And now with the pain management, the, 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 you, you, pain is going on in the body, but you don't feel it. But it is not solving the problem because we are not going to the root of the problem. So therefore, all the external efforts, what we do in medical science or in technology, using the technology, people used to walk barefooted, then they found shoes, and then they found bicycle, then they found uh, motor, motor scooter, no? And then they found comfortable cars, and then they found... Uh, go on, go on, go on. And then they found sheep, boats were there, then they found sheep, and then they go to the plane, and then super jet, and then now... All these, but, but is the problem of the life that Dukkha is gone. Yeah. So, this is the way we can analyze this methodology has been tried, but it does not solve there. So therefore comes to spirituality, we come to spirituality. What is that? How can I be in the situation, but will be not affected by the situation? Situation will be there, but the person can be there. We have to select that and then one can practice. But now question comes, we understand all this, and we have, by God's grace, got certain direction of our teachers, and we have the grace of God that we have practiced in our life certain disciplines. Oh Lord, give me more suffering if you like, but always give it a, this, Guarantee that you will be with me. I don't want to leave you. You give me suffering if it is necessary. More. I am open to that. But don't let me feel that you have gone from my life. Arjuna wanted, selected, between the option of Durjodhana and Arjuna. Durjodhana and Arjuna. Sri Krishna said, both asked, you be on my side. Durjodhana said, if Krishna comes on my side, then I will win. Arjuna said, if um, uh, Krishna comes on my side, I will then win. But Krishna is very intelligent. He gave a choice. What do you want? <coughs> I will give, when I join to any party, I will be only with you. I will not hold an weapon on your behalf. As only, every time I will be with you. And, and on the contrary, if you don't want me, I will give you everything. Everything means 
all the armies, Narayana Shena, this, these armies, these soldiers are not ordinary soldiers, you cannot kill them. They are God, divine soldiers. So I will give how many, there is a huge number of soldiers, num number. I will give this much and all my divine weapons on that side. Naturally, Dujodhana said, hey, he, let me get all those, <laughs> which is the power of God. Huh? But Arjuna preferred to have Krishna with him without any weapon. So this is a choice and who ultimately gained? This earthly failure or joy, suffering, this all attainment, accomplishment. It is a, even the accomplishment of this life is no accomplishment. Unless we accomplish this reality that I am not alone. I am, there is somebody in me and I live on. I don't die. So this is the goal of life and that can be achieved by practicing spiritual discipline every day, little by little. And this type of assertion will come. In suffering and in pain, there is somebody in me. Somebody to protect me. If the whole world leaves me, I don't care. Chaitanya says, Asli soba padura tang pinastu. You, you bless me. Or you kick me. Whatever way you like. I do not care for anything. I love you. I, you, I will be with you. So that is the conception what is given. Every day we can gain. That's why it is said, that we should have to, don't look at the results of your spiritual practice every day. Don't think, I have, oh, I have no vision. Or some may have vision, may not have vision. Spirituality does not depend on your vision. But surely, spirituality, you can feel that you are in the right track. But if you don't get the vision, don't mean that you are not progressing. Vedanta teaches that your character is improving. If your character is changed, character means what? Boldness, dependence on God, facing the challenges of life boldly, and not to be frightened in any situation, death, disease, these are all realities of life, accepting all this. These are the power and the growth in spiritual life. No one is around. See, mother claiming. She didn't want anybody around. Mother is there. I will be dependent on people then. No, I will be dependent on mother. And that dependence is not a b fake thing because it is the critical moment of your health hazard. If you can say that, then it means you have some guts to experience and say something. So that comes. So that will be the force. But the practice needs continuous. Till Vidyate. Uh, and your all karmas are over. Till then, we are wiping out our karmas. In the karma theory, if we go, that's why Upanishad says, Kshiyante Chasya Karmani. All the karmas which are bringing us again and again in the cycle of birth and death and death and birth again, that all karmas will be wiped out. So, how to remove that karma which we have gathered through thousands and thousands of births? How to counteract that? That's why it needs a tremendous one pointed determination to continue the practice of spiritual discipline. So no one can give some easy way. It says our practice will depend uh, upon the goal we fix. But if you if that's also another important point. We should have to pay the price, the, the quality of thing you want, is it not? If you want to have a real gem, huh? you can get a fake gem or what you call uh, eh? Eh, counterfeit or, or say gold. Uh, False gold. Imitation. Imitation. Eh, that's the point. Imitation gold, you can get it. That will price is so little. But if you want gold, you have to pay the price of the gold. So if your goal of life is to have pleasure in this life, yes. You do one type of thing. If that pleasure even becomes a cause of suffering, you think, then you have to pay more price to get something which, which will be giving you pleasure or peace all the time. 
So if we fix this goal, that our life's goal should be to abide in that absolute joy and absolute peace. And if that is to be achieved in this very life, then we should be giving our total energy, total focus. I said, does it mean that we'll have to give up our all, every responsibility? We'll have to go to the cave or become a monk or a nun? No, no, no. That is not the point. Live in the life. How to live that? Your guru will tell. Your teachers of the scriptures are telling us. Try to live in the world. Don't get attached to the world. Do your duties. Serving God who is in you. All these philosophies as we are hearing. That practice to be continued. Here emphasis is that continue that practice which will release us from all the misconceptions of identification into the world. Why? Because God is there. We do not know that. We do not know my why my eye goes to some beautiful thing because behind the beauty is God. Why I like good food? Because whenever there is some spark of joy which comes to the tongue and the object being touched. Sense at universe is like that. Everywhere it is permeated by the same reality. So what to do? You have to seek for that. See that. And that is to be practiced unceasingly. Unceasing practice so that day and night we can involve ourselves into that idea that it is God, it is divine, it is divine, it is divine. In the Prasna Upanishad it says, Vidde tetasang nama rupe purushaiti evam saesho akalo amrito bhavati Vidde tetasang nama rupe If you can pierce through the name and form of the object. That's Vedanta, no? beautiful Vedantic idea. You are giving all the names and forms which is very variation from one to each other. We dis to distinguish two people, we give two names, is it not? The two babies are born, even the twin babies, we give two names. Why? How to discriminate between this and that? So, this, if that is gone, then you will be confused. Who is who? So, living in the world of duality, we live in name and form. But now, Vidyate na tashang na morupe. If that name and form of them is just destroyed, purushaiti evang prachate. There remains only purusha. There remains only the consciousness. And this is Vedantic formula. Na? We are talking every time. Satchit ananda is Brahman everywhere. And only added name plus form. Makes you and me different. That's all. The same ocean water with name and form, we say it is bubble, we say it is wave, we say it is foam, we say it is vapor, we say it is water particle. So it is all the ocean water or H2O. So similarly, Vidyate Tashang Namarupe Purushaiti Prachate. It is called the Purusha, the consciousness. And that, what remains then? That then remains, that Purusha, that consciousness is Esho Akalo Amritu Bhavati. If you see that, then you become, you transcend all time and space. Akalo. Eh? Or Akala. Kala, two ways. Kalo, you can take it as time. You cross the time, limit of time. Or color means the parts. parts. Color. So you cross that limitation and you become omrito, immortal, absolute. So there is the indication that only one struggle is there to penetrate through the name and form. Vidyate. We can meditate on this one verse itself. That becomes our spiritual practice day and night. Vidyate tashang namarupe. Whatever you see, 
Look at the world. Whatever we see. We are, our eyes are fixated into the name and form. Our mind is fixated with the name and form. And as soon as name and form comes, his character, his behavior, his nature, and, and the other person's nature, that type of thought takes position into our heart. But if one can just pierce through that, then what will remain? That Purusha will remain. So you are not to go to anywhere. Not to the cave, not to the forest. But in your office, in your home, in your park, walking, dog walking, or wherever you be, you can just practice this. And how long to be done? Till you palpably experience. It is now intellectual. What I am talking now, it is intellectual. But we'll have to move on and on and on till it becomes a reality. Simple thing. How long to practice? Till you see God in everything. <laughs> yeah. eh? How long to practice? Till you see the smile of the Lord in the ugly and also in the holy and the unholy. With the brute and in the most kind. Because there is nothing Nama Rupa, accepting Nama Rupa. So, but if you fix your goal, to another level then you can achieve it much earlier if you want to go to heaven you want to have some occult power you want to control somebody eh, and something get a huge name and fame you become Jagad Guru you can be a uh, create a, a TV center of your own and message send message to the world for the redemption of the world every day you can be a world renowned person by your own Spending the energy in achieving that goal. And you achieve that goal, you may be satisfied. But this goal, if you want, you will have to be relentless in your practice. You cannot say, ha, ah, I want that truth, absolute truth. And at the same time, I get it within a year. <laughs> or I can, I, I have done 20 years, you know. See, so this is the point. And also, we have to understand, I, I most of the time I, Emphasize on that. That I say, I got initiation, you know, when? I, when I was in 1960, 1970, and 70, and how, what is today? Almost half a century. I didn't get anything. Huh? No. <laughs> how much in 50 years, half a century, really how long you practiced? Say 24 years, think about just I'm giving a realistic picture. Yesterday was a day, 24 hours. Think of that. From morning till night, I went to bed. How many moments I connected myself with the divine? <laughs> it will be clear in everyone's mind. And don't tell me. And I'm also not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fact. We are all lovers of God. If we cannot do sufficient, eh? and we think that I, I, am a, I am a spiritual person, I, I am doing for 20 years. At 20 years like that, ultimately how many seconds? If we actually sincerely think that really I practiced this yesterday for 10 seconds? No, I sat for one hour. For one hour, how long you connect with God? And how long you are with your friends and New York and Boston and all these places? To the marketplace, to shopping, to what items to be <laughs> purchased tomorrow or whom to tell what? Uh, and at what point you forgot in while well, in debating with somebody? All this you thought. But how long you thought of God? So if this question comes, then we should not be restless. Then we should have to say, how I can increase my time space, time span with God. And how I can bring it into my practice that I need not have to find a time only in sitting in the meditation chamber. That's good, meditation chamber. But how I can squeeze this time gap with God in my every interaction. Then you are making a quick progress. Even in a short period you can make a good journey. But if I do not do that, it is like 
I also give this example now and then, that you plan to go start from here and you want to go to, say, uh, Dallas, or you want to go to any particular place. And you are thinking, I'll go. Uh, so, so you talk, I talk today that I'll go uh, to Houston. And tomorrow I talk about, okay, I'm thinking of going. And I'm thinking, so uh, thinking process goes on for so many days. Then even, then you start. You start one block, then you find, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, I have to do something. You come back again. So this is the way we make our spiritual progress and we fix the idea that I am not getting anything. So here is the question. A sincere lover of God should not waste the time and should make the best use of their own personal time. And don't lament on your past, what you have done, what you have not done. Use the present moment and squeeze the time so that your progress becomes speedy. And if it is 24 hours time, is really fully utilized and then it, it does not take so much time. Swami Premananda said what he said, that if anyone can live in Belurmat for three nights, then he will get God realization. Eh? So I, I thought what an easy thing, no? <laughs> <laughs> so if I can go three days a night, and as a boy, a student then, I thought, that, oh my God, everyone living here, all Brahmogyanis, no? So three days, they are three months, three years, thirty years, they are living there. So they are all devotas, all gods. Really, maybe they are gods. But I am saying that I thought that I, that is good. But I didn't get a chance how to live three days in Belmont eh? for a student, outside student. But now, after that, I lived there so many years. <laughs> then, is Baburam Maharaj's statement is wrong? Or my staying there is correct or incorrect calculation. I stayed there three days and nights. How many moments I think of God? Three days and nights, if we all of us can think of God continuously, three times, what? 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds equal to that many seconds. Constantly one can harbor on God. Of course you get God here like this. <laughs> we, we, we hear this. That in the Patanjali it says, uh, we heard, that only if you can concentrate your mind in one thought continuously, what is called meditation, for only half an hour. Babu Ramaraj took a long latitude of three days, but Patanjali says it is not that much. Only if you can keep your mind off from the entire world and into that consciousness or your object of meditation totally focus there and don't mind move from there for only half an hour. Then you are in Samadhi. So this is the point. To get that half an hour, we take the whole life. This is our practice. So don't get frightened. <laughs> Not to be depressed. But the question is that understand this point, what is subject of my topic is this, to understand that this is the real point behind our all spiritual practice. So if we understand that, then we can squeeze the time and utilize the gap in between one thought and another thought of God by bringing into our awareness that every action, every thought, everything we do, it is only I am getting connected with God. Not Namarupa, but penetrate that Namarupa to name and form. Penetrate that and reach that Purusha, that consciousness. So I can continue, but please may end here if you have any questions. An infinite patience is necessary. Sabari, this great story of the Sabari and the tribal lady who was waiting for Rama to come and she Waited, waited, waited. And she was not restless. Her good soul, the drama will come. And she is ready. That's the announcement. God comes, are we ready? We'll be busy. God will come and the door. He is hearing. I came all the way, but he is not attentive to me. He is not looking at me. So he goes back. Poor fellow. He is doing that all the time. He is saying in our heart all the time, 
I'm sitting here. But poor fellow, he's sitting in the room and we are busy with this. Thing. Like the, the children are engaged in play. Eh? And the mother is waiting for the baby to come and eat. But child, child is busy. So we are like child, we are all busy with our own <laughs> business. And God sits there waiting for us. It is not God realization, but it is realization of our own nature by this practice. And he is waiting for us. We should be ready. That's what our, our, our uh, Swami Brahmananda told to uh, yeah, whom? in the uh, eternal companion that you should be always ready. Huh? When Maharaj went there, he said, Swami, we are no, I am not ready today. But you should be always ready. When, whenever God comes, you should be ready. You should be ready. okay, you wait, let me clean my room, then you come in my room. Me, then you wait me. And then Maharaj wanted to see one sadhu on the room of the Gomasari. And, and as you know, eh, we are not organized all the time. So <laughs> before someone comes, you have to clean everything. You know? <laughs> so he said, Swami, I am not ready. Why not ready? You should be ready all the time. God has come to me. You should not say, I am not ready. Clean the room, but here is Oh Lord, if by chance any time my door of my heart is shut like that, Dar Vinge to me, Eshomor Prani, Piriya Jeona Kobu. My door is through. But it is a, but this is a, in, a, in a humble way, as we are always focused in different directions. We are not seeing it is waiting for me in my heart. So we hear it. He said, he said because I am totally engaged into something else, so my heart is closed. Uh, my heart is open for other things, but not for you. So please, please, you know my weakness, so don't go back. Just penetrate and enter into my heart. And if we keep ourselves open, then he may appear at any time. We shall. He said the grace. So you have, we should have to be ready for that. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I think do. You have given the answer. That is the way we can do whatever whatever suits to our temperament and nature. Uh, that we can really feel that this. You see anyone is moving. How one is moving? There must be some. And whose consciousness? You can start with. It is the physical consciousness, it is the consciousness of the food, it is the pranic energy, it is the brain cell, it is this, that, and go back and back and back, think there is some divine consciousness behind everything. If we, this premises is ready, and try to apply that, try to apply that, try to apply that, we forget and try. What is spiritual practice means? Tattva sthiti tattva to stay in that consciousness we have to do practice. Jatno, effort. Effort should be made to keep the mind in that thought again and again and again and again. So this is the there is 
That is the spiritual life. Yeah. Right. Yeah, good. But somewhere it is manifested more, somewhere it is manifested less. In this wood there is consciousness, but it is called potentially. Even in us also consciousness manifesting to somebody as intelligence, somebody as devotion, somebody as charity charitable activity, eh? they're, they're doing good to others, someone manifesting as brutality. There's a power. How it is directed or misdirected, that is a different point. But we have to accept the power behind that. And that power behind is that will be the Shakti or you can say the energy or you can say the God consciousness or God's play going on. That's why we cannot explain the activities of the life. We say it is God's play going on. Because there is some cosmic eh, awareness or consciousness by whose design the everything is wor- working. Okay. Um, Mars, oh. last, uh, last week there was a question. I, I wasn't here in Santa Barbara, but it brought up some uh, controversy. Maybe you can help uh, clarify it from what I heard. Uh, the question was uh, about God's grace, and I, um, the Swami had said uh, that, I think, oh boy, correct me, I'm just trying to, maybe you should prefer, here's how I understood the question from what they were telling me, that if everything has a cause and an effect, right, so every effect must have a cause and every cause must produce an effect, so this is how the world is, so is there anything that can, um, What do we mean by God's grace? Someone asked a question, well, can God intervene and create a new effect because of Holy Mother's statement that if you do spiritual practices, what will be a prick, what you were going to get as a broken leg will now be experienced as a prick. So as as I understand, the Swami had said that he doesn't believe in God's grace. And then there was some controversy about the people saying, well, uh, what do you mean? Can you help reconcile the understanding of God's grace and um, the cause and effect? Is that the way? <laughs> okay. uh, I cannot say what Swamiji has said. He has maybe his own understanding. Uh, but uh, I look at this point this way, that uh, cause and effect uh, is, a, uh, is an accepted rule of this materialistic world. as a scientific mind will have to accept that because of this food you ate, your body has reacted that way. I was listening the other day, a a person was having headache, uh, what you call migraine, such severe migraine for so many days, and doctors could not find anything. He only found why it is happening, eliminating the, from the diet, one food, the other food, testing it, is there any change, is there any change, and he re- rejected one particular food and he, migraine is gone. So we see that this food was taken as help to my life, but it was creating certain, and you know, my, my dietitian will be very much uh, teaching us what to eat, what not to eat. Uh, so if that means there is a cause and there is a effect. So if we think that way, cause and effect is the rule. Who have designed designed this? I didn't design, you didn't design. Who designed it? Somebody who has created. We are saying the brain is functioning this way. We are talking about that cause. Because the brain reacts this way, right brain, left brain, this, that, all this language you are talking. But who designed it? Why it is happening this way? I'll say it is somebody. And God. As a lover of God, we say love God. So somebody has planned this way. Now, if you say, he who has designed this formula, he has no power to change it by his will, then you are restricting the power of God. So that one argument, that we, as a, as a corollary, even, suppose, Something is done by police officer, we normally find the driving the car. We always have some. 
Almost I was getting going to get a ticket. So. <laughs> But when I said, sir, this, that, this, that, understood, and he was so kind, and he said, okay, this time I'm giving you, but warning. <laughs> so it is not a grace, but he is, he can give the ticket, and he can also, huh, can redeem the ticket, or lessen this. This is the way the world works. I do not know what God wants, but I cannot restrict that God cannot do this. Then he is no God. God is God who has the power to do anything he likes, but for general he has formulated certain rule. But exceptional case can be there hundreds. No? So in that aspect it is. But another aspect also I can look at this problem. Uh, karma, I have to suffer as Holy Mother's uh, example. If one takes refuge in God or thinks of God, the suffering which would have been severe, like breaking the arm or having the plow, as if the plow goes through your body, that means such a severe pain you have to experience, you experience a pin prick, as if a pin has picked. I think this way, very with this modern concept of our taking the advantage of our uh, mental conditions, how our mind acts, if the mind is engaged in something else. Many of you, you are cooking. Sometimes you didn't know. You have cooked and sometimes it touched your finger. You are deeply engaged in some other thought. But the burning you feel li little afterwards. Then it's, oh, 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 oh I, I have touched it here. So it, it's, this pain started long back. Your mind who will connect with the pain, he was engaged in somewhere. That's why you don't feel it. The children's example is the best example. Ch the child fell down and really got hurt. And he was crying bitterly. But suddenly, you divert the attention, bringing something. Hey, ha, who, ha. And that, his attention is diverted and he stops and smiles. No? Is it not? That means if the mind can be digressed or diverted, the pain going through the body will be less. So a lover of God, who loves God, if he can keep his mind in God, say I have 100 unit of mind, if I can give 30% of my mind in God, so I will feel the pain, not 100%, I will feel 100 minus 30, 70% pain. If I can increase my love for God or awareness about God, it becomes 40, then it will be 60. If it goes on, increase 50, then it will be 50. Like that, and if one can get absorbed into it, anything will happen in the body, will not have the pain at all. Pain is going to the body. It can be experienced less, and we can say it is God's grace. Why God's grace? Your mind is connected with God and God is, because of that connection, you have withdrawn and that's a grace. How our mind will be connected with God? It's a blessing of God. By God's grace only our mind can go to God. Otherwise it roams around in his maya. So the point, I think, it also makes little sense that if I, so this is a hope for us. That if I can keep the mind as much percentage of my mind with God, 100 unit of my mind which was in the pain will be less by that percentage. It's a mathematical calculation. How I can divert my attention? People divert, we cannot divert our attention. So doctors give some pill, some injection. To, uh, to just disconnect that link with my mind. That means the sense, sensory system can be benumbed. Huh? That day one lady was having some surgery and her knee surgery was going on. And nowadays doctors don't give total uh, yeah, uh, anesthesia. So her lower part was benumbed and suddenly it was a little dozy and she came up and she saw in a monitor, 
cutting, chiseling, all these things going on. <laughs> she, 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 she couldn't understand who actually it is who, who's this thing, this cutting and chiseling is going on. And then she came to understand it is her knees. So if your knees are being cut and chiseled and you see that and you don't feel them there because the mind has been disconnected by just putting some numbness into the uh, nervous system which the transmittery connection with the brain and brain not getting that information, mind is not getting, getting there. So if it is possible, is it not God's grace? Suppose in early days what people used to do. <laughs> in early days they are brutal. I remember when I was a kid, I had some some abscess or something like that. And doctors will come and press, <laughs> someone will press and they will cut it. Oh, no anesthesia. No anesthesia, what's the question? But a little minority, they think that it is not that serious, otherwise they'll go to hospital. But they used to go through that. But now, even your uh, cleaning, teeth cleaning, <laughs> they give something so that you don't feel any, any problem. So if they can do, why not we can do keeping our mind off from this uh, connection? So this is all, I think, uh, both ways, rationally we can think, karma will bring karma effect, but our connection can be felt more. And some people, tomorrow I will go to surgery. What will happen? Seven days before, he is suffering more than the actual operation. <laughs> huh? So who, what, what is the suffering, cause of suffering there? No one has touched you yet. But thinking of that, that we aggravate in our mind, we can reduce in our mind. But how we can aggravate and how we want to do the opposite way, it is our choice. So simply as a devotee, if we can keep our mind in God, we get joy out of that meditation, joy out of that connection, and the body can be off from the grid. No? body identity. This is my way of thinking. Uh, but I'm, I don't contradict, but everyone has his idea and understanding. Thank you. Thank you.